Okay, so like I said, Lake Savage Bell Vance, welcome to Wednesday's Winners. Tonight's topic is something that I love. It is about how to be successful agents and how exactly to get to 20K in a month. And sometimes we find as new agents, it's kind of tough to figure out where to go. I mean, you have your uplines help and you should always be calling your upline. I know. But what I really wanted was someone to break it down for me and see exactly what I needed to do. And I've gathered this through all kinds. Can figure out how to get to the private Please mute everybody. Thank you. Make sure you stay muted until the end of the call. Um, so as I was saying is I've gathered all of this information for my two and a half years here at the Lisa Group on what it takes to be a successful agent. Uh, and it really comes down to making sure you're getting your, your operating on a schedule. We also saw that video from Aaron Gooderman, you know, being disciplined to your schedule, being a slave to your schedule. A lot of people give it a bad connotation, being a slave to your schedule, but I find I have more time with my family, more time for the things I want to do if I'm operating on an efficient schedule, right? Um, scheduling used to freak me out. I used to hate it. I used to felt like I was boxed in, right? But once I started to open up and really listen to my mentors, Nelson Alvarez and uh, Aaron Gooderman, you know, that a schedule is needed for success, boom, my, my life totally changed. I started wanting to create my schedule. I started to create a daily schedule. I started to create a weekly schedule. I started planning my, my stuff out and, and putting in my calendar so that I know that I have that. Um, and one of the things that are most important to me is my family and making sure I have time with them, um, making sure I have time to do the things I want to do. I'm an avid fisherman. So, um, you know, this is the time of year where I can do that the most. And the leisure group allows me to do everything that I want to do on my time. And if I use my time correctly, I can have both. So um, scheduling, you know, using time management, how to, how to properly uh, manage your time here as an insurance agent, setting goals, right? That's a big part. If you don't have a vision, you kind of flounder around as a new agent. You don't really know where you want to go. You kind of just do a little bit of work here, maybe a lot of work there. But if you have no direction, if you have no end goal, uh, it's really hard to actually achieve greatness in this business. Um, the next thing beyond setting goals would be what? Achieving goals, how to achieve those goals, what that looks like, um, you know, how to make, uh, we'll go into detail on, on when you should be setting goals. And you shouldn't just set one goal. You should be constantly evolving as a human. See, true joy and happiness I feel, and from what I've learned, really comes from joy and purpose and growth. You are, you are at your happiest when you're growing. And if you constantly can, can try to grow, then you're going to be happy. And I'm not talking, you don't have to be, you know, an Olympian or um, someone who races 100 mile races like uh, David Goggins, right? He's the biggest, baddest man on the planet and the most disciplined man on the planet. But if you can just try to be 1% better than you were yesterday, you're going to be over three and a half times better the next year. And 1% is not a lot to ask. So taking those bite size, learning how to take your goals and put them into bite size um, things that you can handle is going to make your life a lot easier and you're going to feel more fulfilled as you grow. And then the last things uh, that I want to talk about is tracking your business and then staying consistent, how to stay in the zone, how to be focused, right? Because you're going to find that when you start this business, there's going to be a lot of aha moments. You're going to be like, oh, finally, it works. And every agent that I've ever trained, you know, whether they hit their aha moments or not, there's a time frame on when they're going to hit them. And you, I noticed they hit them after they do specific things. I noticed that I hit them, those aha moments, when I did a certain order and paid attention to certain things that I changed in my personal life so that I could be a, a you know, a 20, 30 K producer soon to be 40 K producer, right? I'm already 30,000, uh, in, in over 30,000 annual premium on the 20th and I'm shooting for 40,000, right? I have a goal. I track my business, right? These are all the apps that I've written. I had to go to two pages now, you know? So, Let's start off with scheduling. 
So it, as a brand new agent, you kind of get on board. You're not really sure what to do. The main thing is that you need to determine what is your on time and what is your off time? What are you willing to do to get what you want? That is the very first thing that you need to determine. The second thing you need to determine is why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Your why matters as much as the why matters for the clients that we talk to. Because if you don't have a why, it's really hard to perform. It's very hard to perform. So think of the things that you want in life. For me personally, um, as an example, Sarah and I, my wife, Sarah, we really want a house on the lake. Ironic, I know, yes. We'll talk about that later. Um, but no, we really want a house on the lake. Um, we really want a nice, nice boat. We want to retire our parents. That's a huge one, right? Those are our long-term goals that we're working towards. Um, you know, those are our big whys. But we're going to get there someday. So we need to make sure that when we get there, we have a new why, right? We have... We're, we're, we're constantly growing towards that. So determine your why and determine your on off time. The very next thing you do is life is about joy and purpose, family first, right? Choose the time for your family. So look at the weeks that you have with your spouse or your kids. What are they doing, right? Make sure you're spending the adequate amount of time with them and block that out. Now I'm going to say this, too much time is always a bad thing. But I'm, I don't, I'm not saying it to be mean or I'm not saying it to, um, you know, put down spending time with family because I love spending time with my family. But if you're spending it too much, you're actually hurting them because you're not doing what you can to protect them. You're not doing what you can to work for them. You're not doing what you can to brighten their future, right? So just make sure you're, you're spending the right amount of time. A good rule is 80-20. Spend 20% of my time doing what I want and I can spend 80% um, of time on my business. That's really, when you break it down through the, the amount of hours you have during a week, that's not, that's not crazy. You know, even 70, uh, 70, 30, you know, that's not too much to ask. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the beginning, as a new agent, you're going to get your first set of leads. What you should be doing is studying your phone script like crazy. Getting that down pat. Going back to basics. Asking your upline what's next? I finished this. What's next? This is where you really rely on your upline. You're growing upline, someone who's actually growing, you know, like my growing upline is Nelson and Aaron. Um, those are my uplines that are growing because they're growing their business, right? They are on top of it. They're on top of what's new. They know how to run a business. They've done it. They've hit that level. So, you know, you're going to ask them what's next. Okay. So I've study my phone script today. What's next, right? Then you're going to get your first set of leads. Make sure you get enough leads to keep you occupied. When, when I first started, we didn't have 50 cent leads. We didn't have a dollar leads, right? So the chance that you guys have to buy hundreds of leads to keep you busy is great because that's what you're going to be doing most of your time is dialing so that you can get your appointments. So when you're scheduling, Make sure you put in your family time and then your business. A good suggestion of time is plan your business between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Those are the business hours that are going to be the best and most efficient for this business. Okay. Now, 8 p.m. might be, you know, 11 p.m. if it's out west, if you want to do that. So make sure you're planning your time accordingly. You know, I have um, GMRs and um, leads that come from North Dakota, Utah, they're three hours behind me, right? So my 8 p.m. sometimes is 11 p.m. at night, right? That it depends on how I set my day up. So that's a good frame. All income producing hours, you know, income activity hours are between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., all right? Um, Anything else beyond that is usually extracurricular. So after 8 p.m., I'm spending the, the time with my wife or I'm getting my, my daily chores done or I'm doing that before 8 a.m. I'm getting my personal reading done. Uh, before 8 a.m., I am um, you know, looking at new products that are coming in. Guys, this is, if this is your full-time gig, go all at it. Start to be a master of your craft. Start reading 
um, you know, books that help you shape yourself. Start reading, you know, what to say when you talk to yourself. Start reading The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Start reading Go for No just uh, in the morning to help you get ready for your, uh, for your day for that, you know, and choose enthusiasm to start your day. Uh, what else I do in the morning is I read you know, illustrations, or I read um, brochures about products that I don't know about, or I'm not comfortable with yet, so that I can understand how to better help my clients. And if you, if you shape it around how to better help your clients, the, the money will come, right? We don't all do this for money. Um, but that's a big part of it, because we're paid very, very well. But if you want to be the best at it, use that time outside your income producing hours, but before 8am and after 8pm to get in that extra stuff right? Reading the illustrations, reading brochures, watching product videos, watching, I mean, we have hundreds of hours on Workplace that you could be watching uh, how to do mortgage payment protection, how to sell, um, you know, uh, virtually. I mean, anything you can think of, product training, um, it's all right there. That's what can be done after those hours. So to break down scheduling again, choose your why, figure out what that's going to be, Set um, your, your solid blocks. So your dials should be the same time every day. And as far as every week, you should be dialing between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. every single Saturday. That's If you do that religiously, you're going to be just fine in this business because people are home, they're happy, they're easy to get a hold of. If you want to be a weekend warrior and come in to Monday with three to 5,000 AP before you start your week, I mean, it's a great way to do it. Um, it's much easier to meet people on the weekends. I understand some people aren't willing to do that, but this is what I do. I work 8 a.m. to noon on Saturdays and I book three appointments. So my solid block is 8 a.m. to noon every Saturday. That's immovable. I stay disciplined to that block. And then I set two to three appointments on Saturday, right? Usually I'm done by six. So I, because people can meet anytime during the day. So I'll have three appointments and I take Sunday off. That's personal. That's the time I get to spend with my family. And then I have all of my appointments on Monday, but I dial between 10 and 11 on Monday. And if I, and if I don't have any appointments, I'm going to be dialing between six and 8 PM. Those are my immovable blocks. No one can tell me what to do. My wife knows that I'm basically in China at that point, don't bother Lake during his dial sessions, right? Because those are the times I need to focus to make sure I can fuel my business, okay? And then I schedule everything around my, my movable blocks. I schedule my time for income making, uh, income producing activities. So I will schedule my appointments during then. I will schedule, um, you know, early in the morning. I don't, I try not to schedule during prime appointment time, which is usually afternoon. In the morning, I'll look at my pending. Right. Uh, you know, so that I can I can help get um, products or policies that are in like a waiting period. You know, they're waiting for the carriers waiting for extra requirements or extra signatures from uh, clients that I can get that done because that's going to make me money. That's going to push it through. And I'm finding that with these instant uh, approval carriers, I don't really have to do that much anymore because it's boom. It's instant. Um, there's no extra requirements. So my admin time has been cut in half almost by instant decisions. So I'm finding ways to, to fill my schedule back in um, to make sure that I'm, that I'm hitting my goals. Now, so we're kind of getting into uh, the time management with the immovable yeah. blocks. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. So that's pretty much the time management is immovable blocks, you know, your dials and your appointments. Um, if you get a no show, you know, pivoting can be hard as a newbie. What if I do if I get a no show, if someone doesn't show up or an appointment ran earlier than I thought it was, pick up the phone and do more dials, right? If I have a no show, the easiest thing in the world is just to spend that time dialing. I already set it aside to be busy, so I might as well be busy. Because the last thing that you want to do is get up and especially working from home, guys, is get up and go to the couch and watch Netflix for an hour. Because guess what? An hour is almost guaranteed to turn into two hours when you're watching Netflix. Save that for after 8 p.m. All right. Um, so make sure you're getting your you're doing your dial sessions at during no shows. OK, for every no show, 
I always try to set two more appointments in its place. That way I keep my momentum. Uh, and then the biggest thing is stay disciplined, right? You're, the hardest thing is to start a schedule and to make it efficient for you. And it's going to feel very awkward, but um, so is growth. Growth is uncomfortable, but it's necessary. So when you're creating your schedule, you're going to notice that some things work better for you than others. Experiment, right? Find what works best for you. And I found over time that Sundays are the best times that I have off and Friday evenings. Those are what, that, that what's works for me. I enjoy working five and a half days a week. That's just who I am. Um, you know, I have big goals. So I, I want to write a lot of annual premium. I want to, you know, help my team to be the same exact way and to write and achieve their goals. Right. So that's why I work as much as I do. So now we've got to talk about how to set a goal right? You got to set your short-term goals when I think is more like monthly. So let's say you want to write 20K. Now you have a 20K goal. I want to write 20,000 annual premium this month. How do I get there? The easiest way to do this is talk to your upline and reverse engineer it. Reverse engineer it into, okay, how many appointments am I going to need realistically, right? How many leads do I need to buy to hit 20K? And how many dials do I need to hit 20K? All keeping in mind the lowest average, okay? So let's say to hit 5,000 annual premium in one week, you're gonna need about $500 worth of leads. That's a low average, okay? You're gonna need $500 worth of leads to hit 5,000 in one week, okay? So how many dials is it gonna take to get to that number, okay? Well, I know that at least five closed appointments is gonna be 5,000 annual premium. So I need to do 50 to 100 dials a day in order to get 10 appointments because I'm three of them are not gonna show, two of them I'm not gonna sell, that's five right there out of my 10, and five of them are gonna buy. That's gonna guarantee you 5,000 annual premium. So now I know, okay, I've spent $500 on leads, I'm doing 50 to 100 dials a day to get 10 appointments for the week. I know on average that two of them are not going to show up and, uh, or three of them are not going to show up. And I know two of them, I'm not going to sell. Okay. So I can guarantee myself at least five. Now, is it going to be perfect every time? No, but you'll notice an average over time. Here's an example. Um, my goal last year was to write 20,000 a month every single month in the year of 2021. Did I write 20,000 every single month in uh, the year 2021? I didn't. I wrote 15,000 in one month. I wrote 35,000 in another month, 31,000 in another month, 22,000 here, 25,000 there, right? But I stayed consistent. Guess where I ended up for a yearly total? 245,000 annual premium for last year. So what's the average? just over 20,000 a month, right? That's because I set up my goal. I reverse engineered it. And I made sure that I stayed disciplined to my schedule and stayed consistent in my work ethic, okay? One thing that'll help you guys a lot is when you notice that you're on fire and you just can't lose, you'll notice it, it's really fun. You're just on fire and you can't lose. It happened to me earlier this month. Don't sit back, don't sit down. Those are the time when the universe is like, hey, this is your perfect opportunity to get some extra time in and to get some extra annual premium. You're on fire. Don't sit down. Go work harder. Push the gas, right? That's how I was able to do, uh, break my own record and write 25,000 annual premium in one week, just one week, because by Monday, I had 8,000 annual premium. And so I'm like, dang. Like I could take the week off and spend uh, five days doing nothing if I wanted to, but I didn't do that. I hit the gas and look what happened. I hit 25,000. That's how you're gonna offset your average is by you know making those um, extra, extra strides towards your success. So you know, set your short-term goals, reverse engineer them, and then set your long-term goals. What do you want for the year? reverse engineer that, you know, if I want to write a uh, half a million dollars in annual premium, I know I need to average, 
you know, around, what is that, um, 40, 42,000 of annual premium in one month, right? And how do I write 40,000 annual premium in one month? You just work it backwards. For, you know, Sarah and I, we want to we wanna buy that lake house. How much money do we need saved up, right? So those, those are those goals. Once you have that vision and that clear vision and making, it makes doing this a lot more fun because now there's a reason bigger than yourself that you're doing this. I get to help people. I get to pay it extremely well for it. Um, and I get to, to provide for my family. Now, um, as far as achieving your goals, right? Um, we, I guess I got ahead of myself because we're talking about using the low averages. And what I mean by low averages is you're, you're safeguarding yourself, right? Um, you're using a low average so that you can impress yourself, right? You can move beyond. Now, when you're setting a goal, don't make it a weak goal, right? Don't make, don't, I don't want you to do something that you think other people want you to do. Do something that you think you can do that's also going to stretch you a little bit. Right. And uh, if you want a great book to read, I just started uh, picking it up, um, you know, recommended quite a bit. I'm only on the first few pages, but um, 10X by Grant Cardone. You know, if you work 10, you know, if you work 10 times as hard as you normally do, you're going to stretch yourself and start to see that goal come really fast. So make sure that you are. Excuse me, I need something to drink. Um, Making sure that you are, um, you know, being realistic, but not, not crazy, right? I would love to write a million annual premium in one month, but what are the chances that one person can write a million annual premium in one month, right? But 60, 70,000 annual premium, that's what we call a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. That is definitely a big goal, but you got to get used to achieving goals first. So start, start reasonable. Hitting 20K, that's a great reasonable goal. Everybody can do that. And then once you start hitting 20K and you start hitting 30K, okay, I can hit that. Now, you know, you can write 30K. If you write 30K, you can write 60K. It's just a matter of work and your work ethic, how much time you want to put into this. Um, you know, then you can do 25,000 in one week if you want, right? It's just about the amount of time you put in and hard work outweighs talent. You don't have to be talented in this business. You just have to work harder than most. If you put in more time, you're going to get way more out of it, okay? Now, in order to be a better version than yourself and to grow, you need to track your business. Uh, and that's writing down what your, um, you know, what your sales were, right? I have a handy thing called a 20K tracker. So it tracks all of my business. Um, you know, it tells me the client's name the carrier, the date, the amount of annual premium. And then I subtract, I have my goal up here in the left-hand corner, it says 40K. And I just subtract every time I write annual premium, that number gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So dang, now I'm looking at this and I've got 9,483 AP left to go before I hit my goal. And I have two weeks left, hell yeah. So it kind of excites you and it, and it makes you, um, you know, motivated even more that you're close to your goal. So make sure you're tracking your business. The other thing is, is that once you start uh, becoming more and more successful agent, you're going to start noticing patterns that you wouldn't see if you weren't tracking your business. Um, you're going to start seeing where your averages are. Okay. So I made this many dials this week. I made this many appointments and I sat with this many people and I sold this, this many people. Now you can get your your legitimate average, not just a company wide average, your personal average, right? Okay, now I can set up myself and redo my schedule and reverse engineer on my goals by my 90 day average. How did I do this last 90 days? Now I can look back at it. I can do the math. Okay, great. So I know that when I make 10 appointments, two are not going to show up and I'm going to sell seven of them. That's two more than I used to sell in the beginning right? On the company average. So now I can hold myself accountable to that new average. And in turn, I'm going to do a lot better, right? I'm going to be better. Um, I'll have a more realistic idea. I'll be able to literally fine tune it to the point where I can call it. I'll be like, hey, at the end of this week, I'm going to be at 7,000 annual premium, right? That's how tuned up you want to get. It's, I call it tuning. You're just, you're tuning yourself to, um, you know, a more efficient person. Um, and Let's see, 
staying consistent, right? Sometimes you're going to feel stuck. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're not moving or you're running your wheels. Call your upline. Just call your upline. They're going to help you from an outside perspective, see what you need to do. And don't beat yourself up about it because you don't know what you don't know as a new agent, right? And so when, when you have any doubts about anything, just call your upline. Everybody on here can be a 20K producer. Um, you know, it's about listening to your upline, following exactly what they say, no matter what, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you feel, we're never going to put you in any danger. I don't mean uncomfortable like we're going to put you in a bad situation. I mean, uncomfortable like, you know, I don't want to talk to that person that just yelled at me, right, on the phone. I'm going to give you guys a story. Uh, I called a lady probably my fourth or fifth month into the business. She screamed at me up and down. And this is probably like the seventh or eighth person. Um, excuse me. She was the first of like 10 or 15 people that's yelled at me in my entire career here. So it doesn't happen very often. Uh, but she was screaming at me using every expletive in the book saying, I can't believe you called me at 830 on a Saturday morning. You bleep and bleep and bleep and bleep and, and then hung up. Lasted like 30 seconds. And so I called my upline and they said, uh, yeah, go door knocker. This lady just yelled at me. Why would I go knock on her door? She's going to eat my head if I go back to her house. Sure enough, a couple of days later, I go and I say, okay, I trust you guys. I go and knock on her door. I hold up the lead and I say, is this you? She says, yep, I've been meaning to talk to somebody about that. And I go and I sit down and I write 1600 annual premium on the spot. Didn't even remember who I was. Didn't even mention the phone call, right? That just made you think some people have a bad day, right? So um, that's what I mean about uncomfortable, right? Stretching myself a little bit, uh, being bold, right? That's what I mean about being uncomfortable. So just do what your upline says. You're growing upline. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, you know, only talk to people that have been where you want to be, right? Don't talk to your cross lines. Definitely never, ever talk to your cross lines about how to run your business or any advice on that, unless it's been upline approved. Like, you know, when Zach Farrell or Josh Harris do a training, that's already been approved by your uplines, right? You don't want to get bad advice from someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so that's why you always want to talk to your, your growing upline to make sure that um, you're getting the best possible chance to, to succeed. So, um, and just make sure you're staying put disciplined to your schedule so you can be consistent. Uh, make sure you're always evolving and changing your numbers and your averages after 90 days to make sure that, um, you know, you're up to speed. Once you hit your goal, don't just stop and, and sit back, you know, create a new goal, start the process over, start the reverse engineering. It, it takes 15, 20 minutes, if that, to create a new goal, right? And to reverse engineer it on paper, right? Um, so if you want to be successful in this business and you want to do it fast, that's the way to do it. But I'm going to open up this call to any questions. Faith, yes, I can send you a copy of that. That's no problem. Any other questions? Raise your hand. There's a little button in here. Uh, it's reactions, and you can raise your hand. Do, 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 do. Seriously? I just gave you guys a ton of nuggets. I feel like I have to say this every single week. There we go. Let's start off with Michael Olan and then we'll go to Faith. Hey, so how many times are we supposed to dial or a lead each A lead. lead. Great question. Awesome question. So when you see people posting up their dials, 24, um, two and one, right? That's how many dials they made, how many people picked up and how many sets. I'm going to guess that they probably dialed 12 leads, double dial each lead. So as soon as I dial somebody and I get their voicemail, I'm hanging up and I'm calling them right back. Okay. That's a double dial. Um, if you're having a real bad day, and you're not getting hold of anybody, talk to your upline about how to triple and quadruple dial. Um, sometimes it's necessary. But yeah, double dial. I get most of my appointments set on the second dial because people, they're not gonna pick up a strange number they don't see. Um, so when you call them a second time, they're like, oh, okay, someone's trying to get a hold of me. Um, Cause they assume you're gonna be a telemarketer or a robocall. So double dialing is necessary. 
Great question, Michael. Faith, what is your question? I don't remember. Um, oh, I remember. So I called somebody and they said, don't call me and hung up. So can mm -hmm. I text him a picture of his lead? Yeah, text him a picture of his lead and say, hey, I didn't mean to offend you, but um, you know, our office received this lead. It looks like no one has reached out to you or got a hold of you, or uh, it looks like no one has taken care of your case. Um, is this your handwriting? And okay. then send them a picture. Um, send them a picture of the lead. And if they say, do not call again, just get rid of the lead. You can't call it. That's the yeah. law. Okay. And can I tell you something real quick? Sure. So I called the first guy. That's what he said. The second person had just rang. So I tried mm -hmm. the third person. I got an appointment. Hey, hey. there we go. But, Faith. First day dialing. But I didn't put it on the thing because his wife called back and she said that now wasn't a good time because her, um, they just found out her son was sick and they're uh, leaving because he's supposed to get a um, heart transplant. Mm -hmm. And she asked me if I could call her back um, or schedule it for July instead. So I'm okay. going to call her the day before and remind her, she said to go ahead and do that. But okay. so I didn't get one after all, but I did get one, but I didn't. Yeah, I mean, you did the best you could. That's extenuating circumstances. So there's not much we can do mm -hmm. with people um, having some serious illnesses or like that. I wouldn't wait till July. I would call her in like two weeks to a month, um, to be honest. Call her two weeks in a month, you know. But great job. Great job, Faith. I'm proud of you. Thank you. So does that count as an appointment? I wouldn't count it as an appointment, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> But you did to all of us. <laughs> Good. All right, Jackie, you're up. I know you're taking us off mute. Hold on. Let me try it from this end. Got it. There you go. What I go to touch it and it goes back down. So mm -hmm. and I down. Like there's, a little, there's a little there's a little mic button on on uh, by the stop video i use that instead that's the one that i use and that's what it does it just flashes up and down on me. uh oh anyways you... what's up so here's the thing that i'm curious about are there different variations that are written down somewhere like in the training videos of different virtual door knocks um no you can get with me and use my virtual door knocks Get with awesome. your uh, get with your upline to ask for the virtual door knocks. That's okay. A great question. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if I say this is what my big goal is, I want mm -hmm. to learn as much as I can about the policies that are available to people. Mm -hmm. Give me some nuggets of what are bite sized pieces for that. Bite sized pieces of policies. Of yeah, I say, hey, I want to know as much as I can about all the policies that I possibly can, but I yeah. want to break it bite size. Bite size pieces is brochures. Okay. So you can go to each carrier website that you are contracted with. You can go to forms and brochures, and you can look up each individual um, brochure for each product. That's a great way to get a little uh, insight. Um, the other thing is that you can go to, to their training videos. They have like five or six minute training videos. You can watch that and get some bite-sized stuff. Um, and then if you have, if you want to go even further, um, you there's a ton of different pages that you can go to on Workplace right from your phone um, to see if, um, you know, hey, Forrester's has this, this plan right video. How do I do this e-application, right? Um, you can go in and search that on, on Workplace and we should have, I mean, we've got over, we've got hundreds of hours of videos on Workplace. So you can just go explore, type in keywords and, and go from there. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, I'm going to call it 843. Thank you guys for coming to Wednesday Winners. You know what that means? That means you are willing to grow. You're willing to stretch yourself. 
Um, you're coming to an optional training by no means, but you know, being here is uh, showing how much you care and how much you really want to grow and, and be a successful agent. So next week, we're not having Wednesday winners. It's the last Wednesday of the month. Use your time wisely, fit in some extra appointments, push for your goal. Uh, I challenge you guys to set your goals this week, reverse engineer them with your uplines, um, and then and then stay disciplined to a schedule that are going to meet and exceed those goals. Okay, so have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you the first week of May. Hey, wait. Thank you, Lake. Have a you good evening. You got it. You too. Lake. Hey, Faith. I have one question. Sorry. Yeah. Um, what happens if somebody asks what company you work for? Yeah, say, hey, I work with a ton of different companies like Mutual of Omaha, Transamerica. Just start naming out the, the large companies that we work with, something that they're going to recognize. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just say, hey, I'm an independent field underwriter. I work with Mutual of Omaha, uh, a ton of other carriers, Transamerica, Columbian Financial Group, right? Um, and then that's, that's what I would say from there. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You got it. Bye, Good night, guys. everybody.